This week on the 215, there's more than books at your local library. Then he's the founder of the biggest international hip hop TV show. Oh, and we have goats right here in Philly. And lastly, it's a portrait project for Ukraine. Hey, welcome to the 215. Mike Jarek here. Breland will be back next week. We are visiting the Falmont Park Horticulture Center. I'm telling you, this is the time of year to come to this beautiful place. We'll take you inside in just a little bit. But first up, our first story. And it combines the art form of rap with libraries. Now, I know that may seem like an odd combo, but when you think about it, rap is spitting words. And where can you find a whole lot of words? <sighs> exactly. Shout out to the library of Philadelphia for making this opportunity. Is there a name for this program that the library is running? No, there's not a name. Every branch would name it the way they want it. I came up with my own name, like uh, Durham Branch uh, Music Series. I'll be going through the city, every library I can. The, the library received a, a, a money to give to every branch in the city to do different kinds of performance. In my case, I submitted two groups. I wanted a, like a jazz group and I wanted a, a rapper. A good friend of mine named Isaac, he recommended that Mr. Pagan take a listen to my music and, you know, they reached out with the opportunity and I was like, of course. I learned that Del P he has a mission of encouraging peace, reducing uh, gun violence. And I said, this is the rapper that I need at the library. Rap attracts a lot of people. And I said to myself, why, you know, nobody had done this before? And make a connection between the library and the, the rapping world. You see on my shirt, Wordsmith, right? So lyrics matter to me. like. Always, it don't matter what's going on in, in the industry, hip hop, first thing first, it gotta be about lyrics. Coldest nights in my kitchen writing, never rub his shoulders with Michael Eric Dyson, lyrics strike him. In order to have lyrics, gotta have this, you know what I mean? So you have to read, you have to stay in school, so this initiative was, you know, it was me all the way. The reason why I made this verse is to show that it's another outlet. I know the world wondering why I'm not out yet. I wish I had an answer for y'all. I guess it's because I'm standing for y'all, against what this is the plan for y'all. For maybe young, inspiring rappers, a library is a place where they should be. Who has more words in their building than a library? <laughs> than a library, yeah. I'm out here really just trying to push a, you know, a positive narrative, change it. You know, it's time to change the narrative. If y'all pay attention real close, y'all can hear I didn't curse one time I performed up here. I didn't talk about killing nobody. I didn't talk about selling no drugs. I didn't disrespect one female out here. The library is a public place. It's a, it's a place that a lot of things should be happening because it's a public place, it's for the community. So um, it's, that's the benefit. People are gonna be happy with the kind of stuff that we are we're offering them. I'm talking heavy, they featherweighting. Ain't saying nothing uplifting, trying to save this generation, raise them up different. Yeah. What happened to the reps that had truth to them? Blastmaster, Chuck D, Brand Nubian. Dumb rappers need teaching, I'm a tutor them. Job as an artist to save lives, not to ruin them. And remember, there are over 50 local branches of libraries in the Philadelphia area, and each one of them tailors their event to their community. So get back to the library. All right, story number two. Uh, it's with who? Who? Who Mag. A guy by the name of Rob Schwartz started this music website. It flourished, turned into a TV show, and a heck of a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Love the kid Capri. Y'all been on my show, man. Oh, there's the Grammy right there. You won the Grammy for Best Children's Album. There's uh, MC Breed and Tupac. Gotta get Georgia, gotta get mine. At a college, my first job was at Polygram Records. This is how distribution was back in the day. We, we just make photocopies. It's Jay-Z's first record. And I put out Jay-Z's first record, Blase Blase, Dougie Fresh, you know, the damage, a lot of hip-hop stuff. Danger record, right, here's Jay-Z right. right here. I was doing it just because I loved it. I was big into songwriting. When that didn't work and I was in a nine to five job, I just missed music. My favorite rapper I still never met. And it will, it will happen. Cool Mo D. I still met Cool Mo D. I got big into songwriting. Went to the West Coast, went to my boy's mic, worked with some of the Babyface's artists, came back to the East Coast to look out for us. 
and we decided to take a different path. So I was leaving the job one day, it was on Water Street, and as I'm walking, there was a free show outside, and it was the Beat Nuts. And that was one of my favorite groups. So I'm like, I miss this. And that's what made me want to start the website. Our very, very first interview we ever did, we kind of cheated back the back door. Uh, a guy that kind of mentored me a little bit when he was starting in the, the magazine, which never happened. He interviewed Randy Jackson from American Idol during season two. I'm like, can I use it for my website? He's like, I already sold it to Hits Magazine. I'm like, yeah, but did you sell the internet rights? He's like, what's that? I'm like, did it right? Yeah, it's something different. He's like, oh, I don't know. You want it? Give me a hundred bucks. <laughs> so I gave him a hundred bucks, and we started off as one of the biggest websites because it was the biggest talked about show was American Idol. What's the hottest new DVD magazine on the street? Who mag? So then we had this DVD with all these interviews, all these celebrities. I had no idea what to do with it. Who mag magazine? So I found this book at Barnes and Nobles with a bunch of addresses with all these distribution companies. I just mailed them out and it got picked up. So we became the first hip hop DVD ever in Netflix, Blockbuster, Walmart, Target. Um, we were in Sam Goody, we were everywhere. And this DVD that we made by mistake got so big overseas that we got reached out to in Europe to say, hey, this, sh this DVD's so big out here, can you turn it into a TV show? Yo, what up? This is The Scientist, The Sound, Kwame, and you're watching Who Mag TV. We have three music TV networks, we have the video show, the dance music show, the hip hop show. I like to welcome everybody to the Who Mag movement. The I left the day job in 2009. I started the music distribution company January 2010. I started the music distribution company because I had a rapper named Just Ice. He had an EP with KRS One. And he was looking for distribution. Yo, Chris, check this out. I said, hey, man, let me help you. I reached out to Sony because I had the relationship anyway. And next thing you know is I got, we had to deal with the orchard. And that's what started me off with Who Mag Distribution. Keep talking blah, blah, blah for the sake of blah, blah, blah. It's really not, not, not happening. Now, a lot of local artists I'm friends with, like, hey, Rob, you have distribution. Can you help us put this out? Yeah, of course. So here it is 13 years later, a 1,000 artists, 300 labels later. We still have a, a tedious process where we go through. We don't pick up everybody. You have to be referred. Like a friend has to bring you in. It's all about the cosign, which hip hop has always been. It's about the cosign. Everything that I do, I built. So when people are like, oh, you're so lucky this happened. No, I was. I didn't come from any money. My dad died when I was young. I, I don't have any family in the music industry. Everything I did, I did myself. Struggled through this. I lost everything twice trying to do this on my own. And it took me a while. And, even now, people say, hey, Rob, you still doing that music thing? I'm like, yeah. Who Mag is on all sorts of streaming platforms. You'll find him. Just look around a little bit. Or you can go to his website, which is whomag.net. All right, when we come back, the goat of all goat projects. here at the Horticulture Center in Fairmount Park. Now, I think this is the star of the show when you come here, the greenhouses. You gotta come inside. Look at all the foliage. Goats would go wild. Did you realize there are a lot of goats in Philadelphia? And they hang out in Germantown. We're at the farm at Aubrey Arboretum in Germantown. Oh, hi, friends. We got our first goats and started our program in 2018, and we're a nonprofit. The Philly Goat Project is a um, community based program where we have 13 adorable, beautifully trained and clean goats. So she is the one that tells all the goats and us what to do. Philly Goat Project does prioritize free programming. Uh, we partner with the library, we partner with Parks and Rec. The three good Bannock Philly goats. We get grants uh, that allow us to be in different parks all over the city to make sure that People, adults and children, can see and interact with the goats. Oh, oh no, careful. Clementine. This program is very important for the youth of Philadelphia and for families um, because of what we're going through in the city right now. Are we ready? Yeah! Programs like this promote physical health, mental health, teaches the kids how to socialize with 
anybody. They run into all types of people that they talk to. And whether they know it or not, they have become environmental stewards. Give him some pets, let him know he's doing a good job. It is extremely fulfilling. I feel like the luckiest person in the world to be able to do this kind of job and get paid for it and also make such big impacts on pretty much the city of Philadelphia. Who are you walking? What's this? A goat. Philly is really a special place, so all of the goats are named after famous Philadelphians who made the world a better place. I love this place. It's like an oasis to me. I live maybe five minutes away from here, and coming here makes me feel like I'm not even in the city. Goats are people size, no matter what size your people are. You're a silly girl. They're very touchable and clean. They don't bite, they don't kick, hug. they nuzzle. Such a nice hug. As communities, we were drifting farther and farther and farther apart. So what can we do to bring us back together? One thing most people love is animals. And what animal is more unique in a city? Goats. I'm the leader of the herd. And in petting and loving them, they talk to each other, and we we rebuild some of that community that's that's getting lost. Give him some pets. Let him know he's doing a good job. It would be amazing if we had better partnerships with the city to make sure that all kids and schools could afford to come to see the goats. Oh, we're gonna go we really look forward to partnering with whoever the next mayor is to make sure that they too are the goat. That story wasn't bad. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had to. So if you want to know more about the goat project, they have a simple website, phillygoatproject.org, and it's over there at the Aubrey Arboretum, which is a beautiful place, but so is here. Bahia is here. What is your title? I am the director of activation events here at the Hoda Cultural Center. Do you ever allow goats in here? No, thank you. No. No, thank you. <laughs> no, they, thank you. They, they each out of house and home. Literally. Okay, if, I, if you come to the uh, center here, what are the events? So we host lots of different events besides just hosting weddings, which we're definitely known for. Oh, yeah. We also do host corporate and non-corporate events, but also on the other side, we host just ceremony only. What's that mean? Just if you want to come here, come get married two hours, just come here to have a wedding, do your photo shoot here, engagement sessions. We also are activating the space a little bit more. Welcome to the park. We'll be doing some yoga out by the fountain, and then we'll also be having some hit workouts, and as well as the summer, we'll be bringing some movies out here as well. Okay, I one time, with Mike over here on camera, hi Mike, we had a Christmas party for Fox 29 in here. Let me tell you, it got pretty interesting in this room. Want me to tell you a couple secrets? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to hear them. So, but let's go back to the wedding idea. Mm -hmm. It's a great location for a wedding. Yes. What's the minimum price I could spend? The minimum price? Yeah. For that information, you're definitely going to want to reach out to Constellation. You're okay. going to ask for Brittany Glover, who's our director of sales here for the Hoda Cultural Center, and she'll be able to build you a package that you would not believe. Okay. Because I heard that you can get in here for a little bit less money than other big venues. So we're definitely pricing fair within the market. Yeah. But again, if you're not looking for some, something like a whole wedding package, we can also do something smaller for you, like a ceremony only, two hours, $1,000. That's a pretty good deal. That's all the time I need, couple, a couple hours. That's all you need. Get hitched and you <laughs> move on your way. Do your photos also. Make, <laughs> oh, yeah, your, oh, make yeah. your memories, make yeah. your memories. Make your memories. Yes, also on the other end, if you would like to do something like a proposal here. Really? <laughs> We also do those here as well. Okay. And also photo shoots for families, group photo shoots, anything of that nature. Okay. Now, if I just want to walk the grounds, yes. are you open seven days a week? The grounds are physically open seven days a week. The okay. gates unlock. And the greenhouses are open. When? So the greenhouse are on summer hours right now, so you're going to be looking for Tuesday through Friday from 9 to about 1.30. So if we do get married, yes. would Brittany give us a deal? She better. She, she better. <laughs> She's Good one of the best you. fashion managers. Awesome. Thank you Thank so you, much. Rich. More of the 215 when we come right back. Welcome back 
to the 215 here in Fairmount Park. Now, one of the great programs they have during the summer here is this senior art camp. Now, this is the last day of it, so I just want to remind you, if you want to be a part of this fantastic, much-attended camp, I would sign up now for next summer, okay? Now, a few weeks ago, we went to the Incominati Studios. They have some beautiful portraits there. Well, now they have a very special project to help Ukraine, and they need your help. <laughs> We had a good life in our country, in our home. Yeah! We lived near Black Sea. Every weekend we were on the seaside, on beach. On the 24th of February, in the night, we heard the sounds of rockets. Boom, like boom, war started. They were like so scared. They tried to make it so fast that he eventually he broke his leg in one of the stairs. Russians military moved so quickly. He had to drive a car with broken leg. Me and my wife every time cried cried because uh, I understand I lose my simple life. You can have a seat. You can get started. We are trained to find really the life and the story behind the faces. My cousin Michael has always made art, painted, done all these wonderful things, and, and him being my cousin, we've always talked. Michael said to me, art is so healing. What if I had some of the artists at the studio come in and paint, I don't know, three people. Could you find three, three people? And I said, well, I have more than three people. I have a family and they represent hope. It's the first experience in my life. I never been painted before uh, these days. We reached out to the Studio and Kaminati community. Alumni, instructors, current students. We'll collect the paintings from the artists. We're gonna have a live auction at our exhibition. I love this idea. This is not just beautiful because we are honored to, to be in a portrait, but knowing that this event is happening because people want to support Ukraine. All the money raised for these paintings is gonna go directly to these families. It's sweet, I'm so thankful for, to, to uh, these people, yeah. <laughs> this is a turning point for us, and I feel inside that something will change because of this event. Our lives will be changed because of this event. I say it <laughs> to my heart, to my soul, enjoy. Because if I will sad about our my situation, yeah, uh, I will have a not good life. Art is the most beautiful and uniting thing in the entire world. And it doesn't matter what language you speak, it doesn't matter what your belief system is, be it political or not. It brings people together and it heals. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if, you know, four people would show up or, you know. But yeah, 35 artists, 35 amazing artists came out today. It's magical, really. In today's world, we sometimes lose sight of hope. It's what unites us, and it's love. We all came in as strangers, and we will all leave as family. And so you feel it. Filled in the walls of the room. In this country, no war. In this country, no bombs. And my family with me. I have a dream to build good life, maybe better than it was in Ukraine. If you want to help, and I hope you do, or you want more info, simply go to their website. Back at the art class here at the center. What's your name? 
My name's Anna Marie. Now, Anna Marie does pretty good work when it comes to flowers. Do you think you could do a portrait? I would try to do you. I don't know if me? I could. <laughs> all right, let me. All right, start. All right. I have to, can I paint on we'll your be right face? Back. Sure. Face <laughs> no, I, no, that's not a portrait. You put it on paper. Right? <laughs> out the horticulture center in Fairmont Park before you leave got to check out the fountain too okay I got to check out now too but I'll see you next week at 6 30 on Fox 29 for the next 215 and of course I'll see you in the morning on Good Day Philadelphia